presence of God. And we're about to declare some things this morning. If you're joining us online, welcome. Wherever you are, just join your voices together as we worship the King. See 
So 
to pour out his love on us like never before. But so often we let things hold us back. We argue with God about whether we're worthy or not, whether we deserve his love. But just like this song says, I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it. But I challenge you today to still receive his love. Let him wash over you. Let his love cast out fear. That you don't have to live with anxiety. You don't have to live with fear. You don't have to live with the past constantly telling you who you are. When God is the one singing over you. his life and invite us into who you are. i 
How many of you believe this morning that we serve the Lord God Almighty? If you believe that this morning, let's give the Lord a huge clap offering. That's the same Lord that we get to serve that is for you, not against you. No matter what season you're in this morning, no matter what circumstance or situation you're faced with, we get to praise and give thanks to the Lord God Almighty and know that he is a responder and will respond. So if you believe that this morning, that he is for you and not against you, let's give the Lord another clap and thank Rebecca and the amazing worship team this morning. High five someone next to you and tell them how amazing they look and you guys may be seated. And I just want to say good morning to our congregation, online family. Thank you guys for tuning in, uh, not just this morning, but each and every Sunday. My name is Joseph Mendoza. I am the lead of our Family Strong Ministry, and it is a joy and a privilege and an honor to do announcements on Sunday and welcome our online and family and community. So no matter where you're watching this morning, Facebook, YouTube, our website, share because you care, let's do our part in each one, reach one. And if you're new online, Put in the comment section right now, hey Joseph, my first time tuning in live this morning, I promise you someone will respond to you in the comment section and reach out to you. So thank you for joining us online this morning. For those of you in the house, if today is your first day visiting the congregation family, welcome home. Welcome to an amazing church. Welcome to an amazing family and we wanna meet you after service. So we have a lot of uh, cool things going on today after service, but if you're a guest, please be sure to stop by the table that has white bags, white bags. We wanna give you a gift and we would love to meet you after service. My amazing friend, LaVonda Bryant will be there. I will be outside. So please be sure to stop by and get your gift. So thank you to the first time guest uh, in the house this morning and uh, stay around after church. We're gonna have some fun. We're going to have some fellowship, and we're going to have some food. So stick around after service. Food will be provided, and we're going to do something really cool that we have never done before. Pastor Tim is going to do a live Q&A outside in regards to his message. So we're going to gather in the courtyard right outside, and Pastor Tim is going to lead and facilitate a Q&A. So grab your food. I will be out there and organize and help set it up, so do not leave Make sure you stick around. I think it's going to be absolutely amazing, you guys. So live Q&A right after service today. Uh, coming up next Sunday is going to be our fall festival. I'm going to bend down here and pick up what you guys know as a pumpkin and hopefully not drop it. 
And uh, the reason why I'm showing you guys this pumpkin, moms and dads, it's B-Y-O-P next Sunday. That is bring your own pumpkin, okay? Bring your own pumpkin. So moms and dads, next Sunday, bring a pumpkin for your kids. We are gonna have all the supplies that they need to decorate their pumpkin. And guess what? We're gonna have three amazing prizes. We're gonna have three age groups, uh, two to five, six to nine, and 10 to 13. So your children or child can enter into the contest. We will be judging them after service next week, you guys. So bring your own pumpkin. It's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, I can't wait to see. I may have to join the contest even though I won't win anything. I'm just competitive. So uh, you may see me out there next Sunday. So don't forget that, you guys. Fall festival next Sunday. We will have uh, games. We will have food. We will have anything and everything for the family. Uh, after service, so mark your calendar. We can't wait for you to join us for our fall festival. And uh, I wanna just take this time right now to acknowledge two amazing special people and congratulate them. Uh, pastor Stefan, who is the lead pastor of the congregation family, and his now wife, Kelly, our worship director. They just got married this past Friday. And uh, it was an amazing ceremony. Our founding pastor, Tim Story, married them. Uh, I had the honor and privilege to be in the wedding. And I'm excited on what's next for Stefan and Kelly as the lead pastor and as the worship director. And let's just continue to pray over them and believe that this next season that they are going to step in is going to be their best one yet. So Pastor Stefan, Kelly, Pastor Paige, if you're watching, we love you guys. Congratulations. What an amazing wedding it was. Can we please give it up one more time for our lead pastor, Stefan and Kelly. So without further ado, it's my honor and privilege to welcome up our founding pastor, Pastor Tim Story. So if you guys can put your hands together and let's give Pastor Tim a big round of applause. Joseph, first of all, how good was that uh, wedding? The wedding was absolutely phenomenal. I'm shocked, beautiful. though, that they're not here, even though it's their honeymoon. Yes. I'm a little shocked, you guys, that you're not here. So if you're watching, we were Because waiting. they're so dedicated to the church, you would think that even though... I'm going to have the worship team come back. That even though that it's a honeymoon, that they would sacrifice. But I knew that they knew that they had Uncle Tim's story who would be here this Sunday. So we're in great hands, you guys. So we're in Joseph, great hands. stand up here with me for a minute. Uh, Rebecca, thank you. Yes. One of the best worship yes, leaders Rebecca. around. Thank you. To all the team, boom, yes. boom, love seeing you on that instrument, which is <laughs> called a what? What is that? That's what I thought. <laughs> Manny, did I miss your birthday? Okay. Make sure I know the date. 21 years old. Because he always has good birthday parties, right? <laughs> so I want to say a couple of things. Did you know that uh, Krista's family's here? I see that beautiful family from El Paso, Texas up there in the corner. I Marquez. Do. The Marquez family. Can you guys stand? Can we All give Krista's family a, a big round of applause? So I've known them for so many years, and then Krista came here to act and, um, you know, started working with a friend of mine as an actor and acting coach, and just what a servant she is to this church, right? I mean, Krista is, I always tell her she's the MVP, and, and she serves her tail off, you guys. I was wondering what you are going to say. I, I had to think about serves that for a her. second. I had a okay, good audible. Job. Jimmy. Who's next to you? Would you guys stand? Give Jimmy and his wife a clap. So Jimmy, you could sit down. So I was just in Switzerland. I was in Switzerland. Stay right up here for a minute. I was in Switzerland. And then from Switzerland, we went to, to Italy. Yes. And I went to Fashion Week. And so all my friends, and a lot of them that are watching right now, kept saying, why are you there by yourself? Because you know I don't travel much by myself. Is that true? He does not travel many places by For himself. For many reasons. Okay. 
And so, so I needed somebody to like be around me for different reasons. And so uh, I had never, never met Jimmy, but when I got around him, he just had like such a good spirit and he's, he's such a, a winner. So I want to say this in front of you as a wife because he could have been doing so many things, but he was making sure I was okay. Mm. And, and, you know, the thing is, when you're, when you're a woman of God or a man of God and you move with authority, if you don't move with authority, you're safe. <laughs> right. But when you move with authority, the enemy doesn't like you. And so even down to the last night when I was going to leave from uh, Milan, he got up uh, like at three in the morning to make sure I was in the right Uber because we almost got in the wrong Uber and it would, was not going to be good. It was a bad situation. And um, so thank you for seeing the gift on me and thank you for being a servant. And I mean that with all my heart. So we're going to do the offering at the end. And I want you just to flow whatever song you feel. All right. Give the Lord a clap for what he's about to do. And I'm going to have you turn my mic up if you can. Let's worship the Lord. Let's stand up. to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. All together wonderful to to worship and here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my Just say, thank you, God, for your amazing grace on me and my family. I just take 60 seconds and just pray for your family. you guys can go to your classes. Can you give the little world shakers a big clap?
Don't you feel God's presence here? Woo! Uh, you guys may be seated. I want you to put up that cup if you can. There was a Starbucks cup. It says Thessaloniki. And um, so in the English, uh, we say Thessalonica. But it was kind of cool because less than six months ago, I was in Greece in Thessalonica. Like when, when Paul wrote first and second Thessalonica and I passed uh, right by Philippi, but I got that at a Starbucks just to prove that I was there. But I put that cup up because I want to talk about something very powerful if you put up that scripture, Philippians chapter, chapter 3, verse 7, and watch what I do with this today. Father, we thank you so much for our lives. Thank you for your presence that I sense here. Let us be better, do better, have better. In your name we pray. Amen. So in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, it says this, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider lost for the sake of of Jesus Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Now, I, I, I want you to really, really hear this. There's this figure in the Bible named the Apostle Paul. And a lot of you guys have done a lot of research on this, but this is like where I've spent my life, you know, in studying theology. This guy, Apostle Paul, lived this unusual life because he was not one of the original 12, okay? And so he comes along later than Peter, James, Andrew, Thomas, Nathaniel. He comes, he comes along later, and so he has this different experience. And part of his experience is that he, thinking he was doing the right thing, challenged the disciples, challenged Jesus, challenged the works of Jesus because he thought that they were in the wrong. And so Jesus comes to him in a very dramatic way in Acts chapter 9 and says, Saul, Saul, because that was named Saul before, why are you trying to to mess with me ain't going to work. So Saul has this big conversion. I want you to say conversion. He has this conversion on what's called the road to Damascus. And he goes blind. And he's lost. And so then the Spirit of the Lord uh, instructs for him to go to the house of this amazing guy by the name of Ananias. Go to the house of Ananias on Straight Street, and he's going he's gonna to help to Saul in his conversion. Say conversion. This word conversion is a very interesting word because to convert something means to shift it, to change it, to transform it. Some is a shift, change, transform. There, there are many people here that had a transformation in which Christ came into your life and it really felt like something shifted. That you were born again, born of the Spirit, some people had like this born-again experience, but it was a gradual transformation. But there are some people that are here that had a radical transformation. So I got to see, uh, Monique, your transformation of, you know, Monique uh, modeled for many, many years. And I knew her as somebody famous. And the first time I ever saw her, I never knew her. But I was with, uh, I was with Magic Johnson and I was with uh, a lady named Diane Cannon, and we were at the Forum Club. 
and we were back there eating, and we were going to eat with this guy named Jerry Buss, who was the owner of the Lakers. But as Jerry Buss was walking in, he walked in with this beautiful lady named Monique St. Pierre. And then it was later in life, I was at this church service, and I'll never forget, Steve Garvey was there too, former Dodger. He was in the back, and then the place was so packed. Remember, it was so packed, they had to put the people up on the stage. And so Monique was on the stage, and I turned around and I started to speak to her about her life and about what God was going to do in her life. And it's called one of the gifts of the Spirit, the Word of Knowledge. And she had this dramatic transformation that she talks about. That, that later, Gene Simmons from KISS talked to me about Monique's transformation. Her, 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 her good friend, uh, Shannon Tweed, talked to me about her transformation. So many people talked about Monique's transformation. So much so that in the Hollywood Bible study, that still we still do it, but we have these huge crowds and you would see Jessica Simpson there, you'd see Robert Downey Jr. there, you'd see Charlie Sheen there, you'd see Quincy Jones there, you'd see Jared Leto there, and, and Monique became my usher. But not just the usher, she started running the show because she just as a leader. <laughs> so she started as an usher, but then she became leader. And, and I'll never forget that some of the thing was, is that, is that Monique? Because she got transformed. She got converted. Somebody say, I got converted. So this guy, the Apostle Paul says, Whatever were gains to me, I now consider lost for the sake of Christ. In other words, what was important is not so important. Wow. He says this. He says, I consider a lot of the things that I used to have. This is the NIV translation. He says, as garbage. This is deep. There was a group called the Little River Band. Does anybody remember this? Dun, 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 dun. And I'll have you turn my mic up a little bit just because some people don't know this. I have to use my voice every day. And so I was in Australia speaking for a friend of mine named Brian Houston who has a, a little movement they had going called Hillsong. And I was speaking for Brian and... and so after I went to this area where they had this live entertainment and this guy was playing and um, I met this guy from the Little River Band. And he's like, yo, Tim Story, I saw you speaking and he told me in another part of Australia because they're Australians. And, and he started talking about his conversion. He says, man, I got radically touched by Jesus Christ and he says I'm not gonna lie I love being rich I'm I'm not gonna lie I I, I like what 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 being popular has has done for me he goes but I kind of see it as garbage compared to like and I never heard it like that like I see it as garbage because garbage Hopefully, you guys all take out at least every few days in your house. Just wave your hand. Come on, people. How many have a trash can in your house? Please lift your hands. So there's times you got to take out the garbage. Say the garbage. So the garbage is considered the waste that I don't need. So the Apostle Paul says, hey, you know, I've done some pretty cool stuff. But now that I have Christ, I... I look at some of this other stuff I used to have as garbage. And I'm more excited to gain more of Christ. And I'm not so interested in the other stuff. In fact, I don't really have an appetite. So we're doing this series called Citizens of Heaven. So I've been doing all this research on this. And so I watched probably five amazing messages in the last week and a half that different ministers talked about citizens of heaven. 
A citizen is a legally recognized subject or national of a state or commonwealth, also known as an inhabitant, a resident, a native. So I have now um, spoken in 88 countries of the world, 88 countries of the world. I've spoken in 88 countries. So, so whenever I have to go into that country, I have to have a passport that proves that I am a citizen of somewhere. So, but as you go through immigration, you'll see people with Russian passports. Stick with me. Passports from Greece. Passports from, from Mexico. So depending on the country, there are different benefits of being a citizen. It's about to get good here. The Apostle Paul is about to break something down very, very interesting. He says this, and be found in him, not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which is through Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith, verse 10. I want you to, I want you to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. In other words, you guys, before you live in this thing called Jesus, you got to die before you live because some of you were born and instructed and trained and got in this pattern of what you think is life. So there might be a death before there's a life. So as I'm talking to about 2,500 people that will watch this this week, and you here that are in the, in, the, in the auditorium, I would say that a lot of you, not all of you, there was a death before there was a life. It could have been a divorce. It could have been an addiction. It could have been you were just out of control. That there was a death before there was a life. But I, I, I really believe this, and I've been teaching this for years. You can either learn from the rocks or you can learn from the rudder. Well, what do you mean by that? When you, have a, when you have a ship, there's a rudder, and that rudder leads you. So the ship doesn't always have to crash for you to learn. So if you have teenagers or you're a, an aunt or an uncle and you're dealing with teenagers, they don't all have to crash like some of us crash. They don't have to crash. They could be, they could be steered by the rudder. Clap your hands like that's powerful stuff, right? But whether through the rudder or through the rocks, there's going to be a death. Now, that death usually comes from a revelation. Oof. Most parties that I'm at, I always leave early. Jimmy, did I leave early every time? Because the freaks come out at night. You guys, that's a song now. <laughs> the freaks come out at night. Dun, 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 dun. The freaks come out at night. So because of what I do for a living, I got to be playing my role. And then, oh, my God, Tim Story, good to meet you. That's awesome. And then, and then I notice the more people drink, the more they try to get in my space, the more handsy they get. I'm not into it. The freaks come out at night. So I will always exit out the side door. Every time. I was at a, I was at a restaurant last week in, in Bel Air, and the freaks started to come out at night. I was just there minding my own business, and then these people that like what I do, they started coming, and they started bringing more people, and they're being flirty. I, I'm not in the mood for it. I just, I just I, I exited out the side because it's a choice. Now, why, why do you make that choice? That choice is because of a revelation that I have. The 
I just don't, let me come over here. I just don't have a, let me just talk over here. I don't have an appetite for silliness. I really don't. Now, there was a time when I was younger that I had a little bit of appetite for it. So I think, maybe they're not that freaky. <laughs> Give them an opportunity. But what I believe is that when you get a revelation of who Jesus is and how Jesus can change your life and how Jesus' ways are stronger, better, powerful, it changes your appetite. Clap real strong if you've had this happen. He said, I want you to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. Watch. And somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead, or from the dead, not that I have already obtained all this or I've already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Now watch how deep this is going to get. So the Apostle Paul is basically giving you a Tim Story quote. You may not be what you want to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. So if you still have a bit of a desire for the pattern of this world. Don't put yourself down. If you still have a desire to blow us all away with how beautiful you are, how exotic you are, how fancy you are, how many apps you use on your photos, I ain't even mad at you. Because what's happened is that the influence of the demonic many times is louder than the influence of Christ. Now, why is that? Because his citizens are not standing up. Now, watch how powerful this is. I personally believe that we, as people that are supposed to be Jesus-style people should be a reflection of what is to come. Kingdom, heaven. So watch how powerful this is. So a person says to me last week, Tim Story, you freak me out. I said, why? Because you have so much peace, you throw me off. Another friend tells me a few weeks ago, he says, you make me nervous. So one guy, I freak out. The other one makes me nervous. He says, I feel like I, you could see through me. I said, pretty much I can. So let me tell you something. As you draw near to, to God, he draws near to you. And what is on God starts to come on you. So watch. Peace will come on you. Strength will come on you. Mercy will come on you. Grace will come on you. Discernment will come on you. Clap your hands, people. Come on. So, I don't blame people for being a little bit out there because I think that a lot of people are not acting like we're citizens of heaven and we're just pilgrims passing through this wonderful place called Earth. And this is a wonderful place. When, when we were going through Switzerland, we were blown away, right? Jimmy and I were together at the Matterhorn. We, were, we had lunch at the Matterhorn, people. Not Disneyland. Switzerland. I played golf in Australia and kangaroos were running by. Don't tell me this is not a beautiful world. But... If God created such a beautiful place called Earth, could you imagine this place called heaven 
that you are already a citizen. When you got born again, you were already a citizen. You're more of a citizen of heaven than you are a citizen of a country. <laughs> Clap your hands real big. Man, you guys are on today. So Paul says, not that I've already obtained, not, not that I'm there, but I want to, I want to, I want to press, I want to press towards this mark. I want to, I want to apprehend him who apprehended me. So watch, watch how cool this is. So how many of you remember the game of tag, tag, when the people say, and they say tag, you're what? Tag, you're it. So. So the Apostle Paul's making reference to Acts chapter 9. He says, Jesus, you came and apprehended me. You tagged me. Now I want to tag you to find out why you tagged me. I want to apprehend you because you apprehended me. So Jesus Christ, to everybody that's here, you've had a time, a revelation, where Jesus Christ apprehended you. Now the Holy Spirit's saying, apprehend him who apprehended you so you can get an understanding of the person who tagged you because once you tag him whew, you're going to get a revelation and then it goes on and on and on and here in, in verse 20 it says but our citizenship is in heaven our citizenship is in heaven say to say my citizenship is in heaven. I've seen many people die in person. I didn't say some. Many. Because I'm a pastor. People want Tim's story to be there to help their family member when they transition. Every time somebody left their body, I felt it and it was a trip. Because I'm a human being. I'm standing there with the family. And all of a sudden they transition. I promise you before Jesus Christ. You feel. Whew, and everything in the body goes. One minute. They're there. Next minute. But every time you feel something shift. Every single time now unless unless we're here for what's called the rapture of the church which is a good possibility because of the times that we live in truly you may never die like most people it's in the bible people at some point he's going to come like a thief in the night and he's going to bring people up and out. It's in the Bible. So there may not be a day that you expire the way other people expire. But when you expire, you have to understand, the expiration is not a spiritual expiration. It's just a transformation from one body to the next. So you are a citizen of heaven with benefits, with protection, with comfort, with strength. So when I was in uh, South Africa one day, I was on an airplane, and I had to go use the restroom. Has it ever happened to anybody where you had to use the restroom? I was going number one, so just go there in your head. <laughs> like, what was he doing? I, I just said... So I get up, I get up, watch. I get up and I go to the restroom. When I come back, my bag is missing. I'm not, that, I'm not gone that long. I'm just on an airplane. Somebody done stole my bag. And so I was in first class, so I come up to the, to the flight attendant. I said, this is the craziest thing. I said, I know that I know that I know because I'm very freakish this way. I said, I had my bag. It was right here on my seat. 
And I said, I, 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 somebody, somebody took my bag. I said, but I don't want to blame anybody. She goes, no, somebody stole your bag. And she goes, and we will get to the bottom of it. This is some intense stuff. Now, I didn't mind if they took my money. I didn't even mind if they took my license. But I did mind if they took my passport because I was supposed to leave South Africa in two days. It's deep, right? So we pull up. The police are waiting. And there was a lot of police for just one missing bag. <laughs> and they find the culprit. They find the person who done stole my bag. And then I said, I don't want to press charges. I don't want to do nothing. I just wanted, I promise you, my passport. So that's all, that's all, all, all I wanted was my passport. Why? Because my passport can get me in somewhere, and my passport can get me out of somewhere. You are a heavenly citizen serving under the authority of the king of kings and the lord of lords you are under king jesus himself if i was you i'd clap real strong like you're catching this come on Say this, say, I'm a citizen. But when you get a revelation of this, as Paul is talking about, it changes your appetite because the revelation leads to conviction. All of a sudden, watch, you start to get this conviction. You say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do well on this planet. Do you know why? Because that's part of the lordship of Christ. Jesus, as Lord, wants his children to prosper. He said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. Jesus died that you would have life and life more abundantly. You are supposed, come on people, you're supposed to have life. Isn't this good? Isaiah 61, just listen. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim from freedoms the captives and release people from darkness. So when Jesus came to earth, man, what he was doing, he was just releasing us from darkness and releasing us from darkness and releasing us from darkness. No wonder some of you have a hard time going to Thanksgiving because it's so full of dark. Even though they're your relatives. You, you, you try to be nice, but you come over here, you're like, ooh, I just bumped in the darkness. Come on, somebody over here. I'm trying to have a talk over here. I just bumped in the darkness. Come on, somebody. Over here, I just, I just bumped in the darkness. So I go to my high school reunions, okay? And so let me tell you Tim Story's high school reunion. And all you people that watch me from high school, you know this is how it works. I come in, you're all nice to me, then I go in a corner, and then there's a line to talk to me. That's my high school reunion. Are you with me? It, it, it's not me over there like just, mm-hmm, ha-ha-ha-ha, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, people see light, and they want to talk. No, they want to say, and then, mm-hmm, and then, mm-hmm, my son, and mm-hmm, uh-huh, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then people will come and say, do you, do you want me to at least get you something to drink or you need something to eat? Or, uh, da, 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 Tim, uh, da, da, this happens to you every time. Are you okay with this? Yes, I'm okay with it. Because part of being a citizen is you start to represent The king, come on, of the place that you really reside. So when you start to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, don't get shocked. 
That's why little kids always follow Jesus. If you don't have any little kid followers, you're probably half dead. You should walk into a room and little kids go. You know why? Because little kids love animation. That's one reason they love cartoons. They love animation. If you're a person that's just full of yourself and just full of problems and mad at everybody, little kids will repel. But when you have animation in life, little kids, for some reason, they'll want to be around you. Clap your hands like this makes sense. Same thing with pets. If you are repelling pets, you should get a hamster and just be happy with yourself. Some say, this is good teaching. So Isaiah 61 says what Jesus does. And then it says something very interesting. It says that God, watch this, will crown you with beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. All right, so Jesus, if you told me, watch this, as a citizen, that you put favor on me, say, I have favor. Then you've crowned me with beauty. Say, I'm so beautiful. Ooh, this is so good. Hey. Do you know the Bible says those who look to God, their faces will never be covered with shame. And they will always be radiant. There used to be this uh, commercial, Alpo. Alpo was a what? A dog food. And they said, who give your dog some Alpo and they will have an Alpo glow. I can see older people in their 90s that have Jesus on the inside. And they're radiating. He beautifies stuff. Oh, my God. Look at me. You don't need to have a yacht to be beautiful. You don't, you don't, need, to, you don't need to be the highest in the room, to, to quote Travis Scott, to be beautiful. Jesus Christ exchanged your ashes and made you beautiful now then and forevermore clap your hands you guys are catching this what did he do tim's story why is the apostle paul so excited because he's understand this divine transformation there's an exchange to exchange means to change for something else so why do i want the old when i got changed for something else he give you something, and now you receive something that's different. It's almost like going to the swap meet. You're not swapping the exact same thing for the same thing. You don't want to just get born again and just be like everybody else. You want to have different desires. He said, I'm going to give you beauty, which means the quality of being physically attractive Something to behold, spiritually attractive. Watch this, so good. Attractive in your talk, in your countenance. Something to behold, something to look at. He said, I'm going to take away your ashes, which means a powdery residue left from burning substance. It means something that has been destroyed, ruined. So God says, I'm going to take away the stuff that was ruined in your life, and I'm going to exchange. So the apostle Paul is saying, Philippians, why do I want to go back to what was ex exchanged? Man. So how do we, how do we want to walk? as citizens on this earth. He made it super simple. Ephesians 2.10, for you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, so that you would do good works. 
You are sentenced to success. You are a citizen of the Most High God. Jesus is your king. Clap your hands and shout. The king knows exactly where you're supposed to be. You have been positioned for success. You have been postured for success. Now we just got to get you to cooperate. Because you're going to get pulled. So good. I was watching, I was flipping through the channels and I saw Khloe Kardashian. She was praying. And she was praying this powerful prayer. She says, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you that you will. She said, I plead the blood of Jesus. And I said, my gosh, see, her dad, Robert Kardashian, was one of my great friends. Not good. Great friends. Robert Kardashian was a charismatic Christian. Those girls started in a charismatic church. So even though you may look at certain people and you say, well, they don't do all that right or they don't do this right... Sometimes there's a side of them that's fighting and looking for what they know is right. So one of the things that Jesus does is he will shine the light on your life so you become a billboard for a better life. Getting on American Airlines, almost done. I walk on the plane and I see a flight attendant and she starts crying. I'm like, Oof, this is an interesting response. She looks at me and starts crying. Come on, people. And you're thinking many thoughts. Like, why is she crying? I just, I looked at her. She cried. And then she says, are you a guy named Tim Story? I said, yes. She says, oh, my God. She says, I saw you speak in Seattle, Washington about seven years ago. And she says, I... You really helped me. You taught on, it, uh, on the comeback, turning the setback to comeback, and I was doing so well. She goes, the last two years, I'm, I'm just lost. And Rebecca, if you can come. She goes, I'm just lost. And she says, when you walked by, she said, you reminded me of the person I'm supposed to be. You reminded me, look, of the person I'm supposed to be. He changes, if you just play in the piano sound, your dead things, your destroyed things, your ruined things. And watch, watch as I quit. He exchanges them. He says, give me your ashes. I'm going to change it for beauty. He never puts beauty on your ashes. See, people have tried to beautify your ashes. Oh, you could have been great, but you did that back then. And then you went through that and you, no, Jesus does not treat you as your sins deserve. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those that fear him. He exchanges your loss, I have in my notes, your hardship, your mourning, and even your filth. And he says, give me Give me your ashes and take my beauty. Because on this place called earth that I created, and believe me, he's still glad he created it. He said, I need you to walk beautifully. If you're in pain, I want you to walk beautifully. If you're in despair, I want you to walk beautifully. If you don't understand, I want you to walk beautifully. If things don't look like they're going to work, I want you to, to walk beautifully. I want you to walk by faith and not by sight. I want you to realize that you are just a person passing through. And this too shall pass. You're a citizen of heaven. I'm done speaking. 
Anything you want to sing. If I was you, I'd stand up and I'd worship him. And don't put the camera on me. Just keep it right on her. Just worship. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood runs through my veins. Come on, sing this today. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. Say it again. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am, I am a child of God from my mother's womb. From my mother's womb, you have chosen, you have chosen me in love. Love has called my name. I've been born again. I've been born again into your family. Your blood runs through my veins. I'm no longer a slave. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child. child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Just try it. Sing those words. I am a child of God. I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave to fear. No. But I am child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Just try it. Just lift your hands into him. Lift your hands to him. You know, rest in this. But I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Say, I'm a new creation. creation. It says, the old is gone and the new is here. Just say, the new is here. here. And then it says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. But now he has now given you the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, I want you to look at me. If you're not careful, you'll get so caught up with the fact that you are just in your own reconciliation. And you'll stay in your own recovery zone the rest of your life. I'm never good enough. I tried. Had I done this different in my 20s, in my 30s, in my 40s? But Jesus says, no, 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 no. you got to understand, get a revelation of this. I have reconciled you. I have taken your ashes and I've exchanged it for beauty. I've got you under control. Just abide in me and I'll abide in you and you're going to produce fruit. That is just what's going to happen. Now watch. What I need you to do is I need you to look out for other people. I need you to reconcile my children. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but they'll have everlasting life. The Lord said to me in prayer the other day, Tim, I got you covered. Look out for the other guy. 
no, 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 no. Could you, could you, could you imagine? Could you imagine if you really got a revelation of that? Felicia, I got you covered. Just look out for the other guy. Look at me. I'm talking to people. Jaime, I got you covered. Just look out for the other guy. You guys, look out for the other guy. Randy Morgan, I got you covered. Look out. Look out. Just look out for the... Richard, I got you covered. Just look out for the other guy. Because you're my... You're my child, and you're a citizen. You're a citizen. You're a citizen of a place that will never decay. It'll never grow old. There will never be a change of government. There will never be a re-election. For every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lift both hands. Say, Jesus, come into my life in a new and special way. Say, Jesus, be Jesus in my life. Just a piano sound, just for a minute. Just close your eyes. He's talking to you. God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, just praise Him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. One more time, watch. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, I'm going to praise my Father, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. So, Rebecca, you, you know this more than I do because you spent your life as a worshiper, even at a deeper dimension than me. But the Bible says in Psalms 119, just hear me. When the people of God prays, yes. we literally bind demonic forces. Yes. Yes. Do you know the, why the power of your words is so important? Because what you say has an effect on an atmosphere. Yes. 
So when we begin to sing and we're saying praise God, we are binding things in the spirit world that are demonic. And so no, get off my child, get off my finances, get off my mindset, get off my career, get off my purpose, get off our country, get off our world. Somebody clap your hands and sing praise God. Praise God. Come on, praise God. Praise God. Praise what? Praise God. 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 Put your right hand on your heart. Say, I am healed. My mind is healed. My body is healed. Now just breathe that in. In the name of Jesus, thank you for healing us. Everybody watching, Lord, thank you for healing them in their mind and their bodies. Thank you for restoring things in their house with their families. Restore families. Thank you for working miracles and making a way where there was no way. Just for 60 seconds, just give him whatever's been challenging you. Just a piano sound. I want you to look up here. We're going to do the... The tithe and the offering. I wanted to wait to the end till you guys heard this message. Because I'm telling you, for those that know me well, you know this is how I've been living. I was strong with God for most of my life. But when the pandemic hit and I had so much time on my, on my hands, and it was basically me and my son living in a house... I had time on my hands to study and to worship like I had not had since college. And God took me away into this place where a lot of things just didn't matter anymore. It changed my appetite for what success is and what life is and that life is temporal on this earth, but it's eternal in Him. Whew. And God will pick you up when you start getting that way. And he'll, he'll put you in places you could have never manipulated yourself into. And when God promotes you, no one can demote you. So today we're going to take a really good offering for a young church. We're only seven years old, people. Two years we couldn't even meet in public because of the pandemic. Romans chapter 10, just listen. But how can people call for help? If they don't know who to trust or look for, this is in the Message Bible. How can they turn to Christ if they've never heard of him? How can they hear if nobody tells them? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news to the hurting? Look at me. You know what God wants us to be? A bearer of good news. Clap your hands like that sounds like a great idea. Come on, clap your hands strong. I was at a church the other day, and I did this offering, and I said, I'm looking for people to, to match me. I'm going to give $500, and for those that want to match, come and... I think it was right at 48 people just walked up. They just started walking up. We won't do it this way, down. 
But to, to do a church like this, just let me tell you, man, that's why so many churches just fold. You know, one in three churches folded during the pandemic because when you can't meet, we couldn't meet for two years, okay? And so when you start having a change in physical uh, attendance and a, a change in um, other things, things, things shift. So there's times where people like us who believe in this whole citizen of heaven stuff say, you know what, God, I'm going to step up as a citizen of heaven for your cause. And I'm going to give believing it's going to come back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. But I'm also going to give knowing that you got me. How many believe that, that God has you physically, financially, eternally? Just lift your hands. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give an extra 500 today. You don't have to step up. This is our church. I just did that because I was a guest somewhere. But I need you guys to step up, okay? Some of you ladies with businesses, men with businesses, shock me today. Do 2,000, 5,000. I, I would sit and guess churches and give so much money they go like did you just do that I go yeah you just told me you needed it but I tell you what when you give it comes back it's a supernatural principle just say I believe that but for all of us let's really start being tithers let's be real citizens of heaven and and off the top, just say, you know what? By faith, I'm going to give 10% of my income, and I'm just going to trust God with the 10%. I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to go for this full on. I mean, that's where I'm at right now in my life. I told my sister Berna the other day at breakfast, actually yesterday in Solvain, I said, your little brother has changed. She goes, I see. I said, I'm going out with the one who brought me in. Thank you, world, for all the fancy stuff you guys have been giving me. All my little fancy projects. I do those because I can affect more people. But I'm going out with the one who brought me in. But now I'm not going out for a long time now. <laughs> but I'm all the way in this thing. Whew. All the way all the way lift your hands if you sense him so I want you to just say these words say dear Jesus and Joseph coming up here say speak to me on what to give today and I'm going to give to help this church and help your kingdom everybody watching you guys look at me we need you to partner with us we need partners we need partner we need kingdom partners if you just gave $30, if every single one of you just gave $30, if you just gave $10, $10, just gave, just start it. You say, I've never done it. Start it. Start investing in what you think is really important. How can they give? You guys can give this morning. There is a uh, couple of different ways we can give. We can text to give you guys, super simple. You text the keyword Congregation Church, all one word. Majority of you use our text to give platform, uh, 77977, keyword Congregation Church. Uh, you all should have envelopes. If you do not, you can raise your hands, and our amazing ushers will get you an offering envelope or a pen. So if you need an offering envelope or a pen, please raise your hand. On the envelopes, we also have a QR code that you can scan with your phone. It's another way that you can give very, very quick. So QR code, text to give, check made out to Congregation Church, or you can give by cash. So those are the different ways you can give online. There's a link right now in the chat comment section. Click on it, and you can give right now. So thank you all for being generous givers. And how many of you know that? You guys that, are generous. How many of you know that God loves a cheerful giver? Loves a cheerful giver. And thank you for the, what this church is, is doing, right? A absolutely. The, 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 the church is, is flowing. and it's, people, are, people give, and you people watch online give too, so thank you guys. So you guys may be seated. Let's do that. Joseph, give me one point you got out of this message today as the people are giving. 
I'm going to read from my notes as you were talking about from the beginning of your message about Saul and this thing about a conversion, which means to shift, change, or transform. And that some of us have had gradual shifts, but some of us, like Monique and myself, we've had radical shifts. But what about the ones who are believing for this conversion, for a child, a family, a loved one to come through and pull through? And we're standing with you and we're partnering with you guys in prayer, believing that there will be a conversion or transformation that'll take place. Sometimes they're gradual, sometimes they're radical. But I tell you, as a person standing up here, I know what it's like to have a radical conversion and transformation. God is real. He is moving, even when we don't see him moving. That's faith. So this thing about conversion, Tim, hit me. Yeah, and it was awesome because um, we were at Stefan's wedding. We were in the same hotel. And I was calling Joseph because I had to ask him a question, and he called me back an hour later. He said, sorry, I, I had my worship music on real loud. And, like, this is, like, the lifestyle that we're really into. Like, we're not joking. Does anybody sense his presence in here? Wait till heaven. Heaven's going to be heavenly. Wow. So you guys know how to give? You can use QR code on the offering envelope once again, or we can text to give you guys cash, check. We make it very, very simple for you guys to give. And once again, thank you guys for being cheerful givers. Thank you to everybody online. There's a link right there you can click on to give now. Okay, so the ushers, and thank you, ushers. I always come and hug you guys. Thank you, guys. You can pass the containers. Wow, wow, wow. So after the service, in about four minutes, um, what do we have outside? Uh, we're going to have some gourmet sandwiches, some chips. we got some sodas, some water, some drinks, you guys. How gourmet are they? They're pretty gourmet. So <laughs> turkey, applewood smoked bacon, avocado, a pesto aioli on them. So it's not our average Subway sandwich. So it's grab gourmet. a sandwich, some chips, a drink. And we have already set up the area outside. There's chairs set up outside. We also have the tables with the umbrellas. So be sure to grab your food. Find a seat. There's plenty of seating outside. We're going to conduct a Q&A immediately after service. So we'll be in the courtyard area. So only come to the Q&A area if you want to. So one of the things that when I do these big seminars for companies, sometimes I'm speaking to 10,000 at a time. And they, the, the, the leaders of the company go, we want you to speak. But I'll tell you the thing that people like is when you answer questions. Because you guys... Imagine the places I've been and the people I get to know and the things that are inside me. I'm like a walking library. And so let's discuss today's message and then any questions you have on life or where you're at. And we'll just dialogue for like 30 minutes. Okay. All right. So that will happen in just a moment. We're going we're gonna to end with this song and then we're going to do a corporate prayer and we'll be done. How wonderful is your name. Wonderful is your name. Let's stand up. How wonderful is your name, oh Lord. You're going to have a good week. Come on, people. How wonderful is your name, oh Lord. How wonderful. How wonderful is your name. How wonderful is your name. How wonderful is your name, oh Lord. One last time. How wonderful is your name. Your name, how wonderful is your name, oh Lord. Clap your hands, all you people. Did you enjoy church today? All right, just confess this with me. Say, This week I will grow, I will learn, I will prosper, I will be the light. 
Say beautiful things are happening in my life and in my family's life. Say, I love you, Jesus. God bless you. We'll see you out there. How wonderful is your name, oh Lord. How wonderful is your name, oh Lord. How wonderful is your name. How wonderful is your name. How wonderful is your name. Okay, let's pretend we have like 12,000 people and sing and sing that real slow. You know how we get in those deep worships? How powerful is your name, oh Lord. Wow. How powerful is your name, oh Lord. How your name how powerful is your name how powerful is your name oh lord how powerful is your name how powerful Just for 30 seconds, lift your hands. That's him. You got to wait on him because his weight is here. So close your eyes just for just a moment. Is the weight of God's presence is here, and He'll speak to you. Just one idea can shift everything. One healing, one miracle, one breakthrough. Can you guys sense how thick this is? Just lift your hands. So like for for Rebecca and I, we were in city after city after city 
her before she was even married, then her being married, and we sense this presence like yes. this, just like what? In Singapore, you yes. then you'd feel it in Indonesia. Then you'd be in Monterey, Mexico, 7,000 people at a bull arena, and you're like, what? Yes. The citizens of heaven got together. Yes. Guys, this is so real, what yes. I talked about today. Yes. He's, he's got us covered. Yes, he does. To the sound people and the people that run the cameras and all that, and um, Hannah and the whole team, thank you guys. Because we're, we're talking to a lot of people that don't usually come to church on that screen. So awesome. Yes.